Hi, I'm Rick Bayless, and I've been exploring, cooking, and eating in Mexico for over 40 years. Now I'm taking you to Mexico City for a deep dive into the classic dishes you've asked to learn. It's time to share my best recipes ever. Mole is without a doubt Mexico's most famous celebratory dish. And when most people say that word mole, what they're referring to is this complex sauce that is a combination of several different kinds of dried chilies, thickened with nuts and seeds, sweetened with some fruit, and elaborated with a whole host of herbs and spices and chocolate. But now if you've ever tackled the making of mole, you know it takes at least a day to accomplish the task. But the truth is, in Mexico, people have access to these artisan pastes and powders that really does a lot of the heavy lifting. So I've brought you to this place of San Pedro Actopa in the southern part of Mexico City in the section that's called Milpa Alta because 90% of the people that are in this town are dedicated to the production of those pastes and powders. In fact, what they make accounts for about 60% of all the mole that is eaten in Mexico. Now, of course, most of it is shipped out from here, but there are a number of people that make the pilgrimage here to buy the very best. When you walk down the streets, San Pedro Actocpan, everything smells like mole. And I get so incredibly hungry. And I have to say that one of the big names in mole here, um, one that you can find all over the country, is Don Pancho. And above their store, they've got this beautiful restaurant where you can sit down and have a whole plate of mole, which is exactly what I'm in the mood for right now. You know, what they've served me here is turkey with mole, which you may think of as the, the classic classic, but most places in Mexico it's just served with chicken, so I love it when I come here to this town because you can get it with the mole in the traditional way. But this town is known for more than just red mole. There's also a green mole here too, and it's made from pumpkin seeds and green chili and herbs. Now, everywhere you look here, they're selling these little tamales, and they're made in this old-fashioned traditional style that they call the umbligo style, the belly button style, because they twist the top and press it down, then you unwind it like that and unroll it. And yeah, this is all kind of finger food here. What I like to do is dip it into the mole. This one's filled with black beans. Super soul satisfying. This place is 180 degrees from where we just were. I've brought you to Pujol. It's the restaurant of Enrique Olvera, the most famous chef in all of Mexico. And this is his most famous dish, mole on a plate. Now, now what you have to understand is that in Mexico, when you ask somebody what they're gonna have for dinner, a lot of times they'll tell you the name of the sauce. We might say we're having chick or, chicken or fish for dinner, 
they'll often say, I'm having mole or pipian or in cacahuatado. If they happen to be living down on the coast, it might have fish in it. In the highlands, it might be chicken or pork. If it's Lent, the whole dish may be made from vegetables. And so this is Enrique Olvera's distillation of Mexico. Now, you'll notice that there's two different colors of mole on this plate. The darker one is the one that they call mole madre, mother mole. And it's been going for 1,660 days, this particular one right now. Which means that every day they refresh it with new ingredients and bring it to a simmer and let all of those flavors just come together in deep richness. And then this lighter colored mole in the middle is today's homemade mole. At the table there's no silverware at all, only a beautiful heirloom organic corn tortilla here to use as the utensil to scoop into this mole. This is the essence of Mexico for Enrique Olvera. Now it's a big task, but I'm going to step you through the making of my best ever version of a central style red mole. If you've got a Mexican grandmother, hers is the best ever version, so make hers. But if you don't have a Mexican grandmother, I'm going to show you all of what you need to know to turn out a really beautiful version of it. Now this is a dark red chili sauce, so we have to have the right chilies to make it. So we have the pasilla chilies here and the mulatos. Together they're not only going to give dark color, but this rich complexity to the flavor, as well as a little tiny bit of chocolatiness. Then we've got a few of the ancho chilies, a lighter and sweeter chili. When you're working with dried chilies, the first thing that you do is to tear the stem off of it. That'll come off really easily here. And then open them up and shake out all the seeds. Most of them will come out really easily. Okay, now we've got the chilies prepared, and the next step is to toast or roast almost all of the other ingredients. I know that seems like a daunting task, but if you don't do it, your mole is not going to have the depth of flavor and complexity. Start by putting a few tomatillos under a broiler, roasting them for about five minutes on each side until they become blackened in spots and soft. Then scrape them into a bowl, being sure to keep all of their delicious juices. Next, in a dry skillet over medium heat, toast some sesame seeds, making sure to stir them constantly until they're golden. That'll take about five minutes or so. Add them to the bowl with the tomatillos. Heat some fresh pork lard in a skillet and fry the chilies on each side, just long enough for them to change color. Pour hot tap water over the chilies, weight them down with a plate, and let them rehydrate for about 30 minutes. Next, fry whole almonds and garlic cloves until they're brown, then add them to your bowl of dry ingredients. Also, quickly fry some raisins, just long enough for them to puff up and brown slightly. I'm using turkey breast for this recipe, so be sure to salt it on both sides before putting it into your hot pan and browning it all over. The chilies have soaked now, and this is a moment at which we have to determine whether we're gonna use the chili soaking liquid or not. I'm gonna take that plate off of the top of it, and with a small spoon, taste it. What we're looking for is sweetness or bitterness. And um, those were good chilies. <laughs> They're a little spicy, 
but man, are they sweet. So that means that I am gonna capture all of that flavor in that soaking liquid. If I detected a lot of bitterness in it, then I would replace it with water at this point um, because we're just gonna be cooking it and cooking it and concentrating it. You'll see that in just a second. The next step is to put those chilies in a blender jar along with their soaking liquid and blend it all until it's as smooth as you can get it. Strain it back into the bowl through a medium mesh strainer to catch any stray seeds or chili skins that may not have been blended completely. Now I said that mola is a complex sauce and to this bowl of the roasted tomatillos and the raisins and all of the rest of those toasty roasty ingredients we have a few more ingredients to add to them all of the spices so we're starting here with cloves and anise black pepper and cinnamon and then to give this mole a really velvety texture toasted bread's going to go in and then of course what everybody thinks about mole is going to be seasoned with chocolate just keep in mind that chocolate is only one of many flavors in this and should never be the predominant flavor. So I'm gonna add all of these things to it. This piece of toasted bread, I'm just gonna break up. The chocolate's gonna go in chopped like that. And then all of these spices, I'm going to put all in together like that. And now we're ready to go over to the blender, but I need to add some extra liquid, obviously. I'm gonna start with about a cup full of water to this mixture, and then put all of that into the blender jar. Absolutely no reason at all to wash this blender jar. It's all gonna end up in the same pot anyway. And then we'll go over to the blender and blend this again until it's as smooth as we can get it. If you see the ingredients stop moving in the blender jar, feel free to add a little bit more water to get them started again. Now once it's completely smooth, press this mixture through a strainer back into its bowl. I say for real traditional flavor, always use fresh rendered pork lard. If you're not a pork lard person, then I suggest that you use a vegetable oil for this. I'll spoon it in here and wait until it melts. The pan is hot enough that once it is melted, it should be the right temperature for me to put in the chili paste. And then I'm gonna stir the chili paste until it's reduced to like the consistency of tomato paste. That should take about eight to 10 minutes. It's gotten really thick now. You have to stir it because it'll spatter on you, which is one of the reasons you want a really deep vessel to cook this in. And I'm gonna put the second puree in here, but we wanna to continue to cook it until it too is just about as thick as tomato paste. That'll take another, say, eight to 10 minutes. Keep stirring it. It's so thick now that when I stir around the outside with this spatula, I can see all the way to the bottom of the pot. Now it's time to add liquid. I've got six cups of water that's gonna go in here. Now most recipes would tell you that you need to use chicken broth and feel free to do chicken broth. I'm actually gonna braise that turkey breast in this and that's gonna give off a whole lot of turkey flavor to it. So I don't really need that extra chicken broth flavor in this. We're gonna let this simmer over kind of a medium low heat now oh, for about an hour. You could leave it go for three or four hours. It just gets better with time. Okay, we're to the final stages of mole making, which is the seasoning. And it's not the easiest thing to season a mole, especially if this is your first time going through it. 
We're gonna add some salt to it and that will bring out the savory notes in the mole. Everything that is not sort of fruit-like or has a sweet flavor to it. And then we're gonna add some sugar that will bring those things out. So we'll start here. We, remember, we have a large pot here, so it's gonna be more than just taking a salt shaker and sprinkling over the top of this. So I'm gonna stir that in and then give it a taste. And I encourage you to do this um, little at a time so that you can really understand how the flavors change in the pot. Okay, now I've got those savory notes coming out. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar to this pot because we do have dried fruit in here and we also have dried chilies. Ah, this is a beautiful pot of mole. And now, Everything is in perfect balance. Everything is in perfect balance. I'm gonna set it up for baking the turkey breast. So I'm gonna just upend the cazuela of mole into the more shallow cazuela. Okay, there, and we're ready now to nestle this turkey breast down into the mole for the baking. And this will be basically like a braise. I'll just have this turkey breast skin side up, almost up to the top in the mole, and I'm ready to put it into the oven. I think it will take about 35 minutes or so at about 325 degrees. I let the turkey breast cook until it was at about 150 degrees, and then took it out, let it sit for a few minutes. Now, this mole that is here, it's thickened up quite a bit. I like mole to be the consistency of a fairly thick cream soup, but not any thicker than that. So I've got a little bit of water here. Just a touch of it will thin it out to exactly the right consistency. Now all I have left to do is slice the turkey, pour in the mole, serve the turkey on top, and garnish it with some toasted sesame seeds, that's a traditional touch, and a little bit of flat leaf parsley. One thing about making green mole as opposed to red mole is that it's way faster and way easier too. It has many less ingredients in it. And in the traditional Mexican kitchen, when you're making mole, the first step is often to cook whatever protein it is in water, simmer it, and use that broth for making the mole. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, is a chicken green mole now. So the first thing that we have to do is make this broth. And broth in Mexico is very, very light flavored. It's nothing like the traditional French stocks that are, well, they take hours and hours to make, and they're much more potent. So I've got some water that is simmering here. I'm gonna turn the heat up. Uh, I'm gonna put a, some onion in it. You can see this is very light flavored broth. A little bit of garlic and then the three classic herbs that go into a broth in Mexico, and that would be bay leaf, thyme, and I'm lucky to have fresh marjoram. So we're gonna let this come to a simmer. I can already smell those beautiful fresh herbs releasing some of their aroma into the broth, and as I see it start to come to a simmer over here, I'm gonna add some chicken to it. So we've got the water at a bare simmer now, and I'm gonna nestle down into it these beautiful bone-in chicken breasts that have the wing attachment left on. I, of course, need to season this broth 
with some salt. So I'm measuring in a teaspoon and a half for this. Now, as soon as this comes back to a simmer, I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. At the end of that 10 minutes, I'm gonna put a top on it, turn off the fire, and let it sit for an additional 10 minutes. And I'm gonna have absolutely perfectly poached chicken breast. So a green mole is basically a tomatillo sauce that is thickened with pumpkin seeds and then flavored with green chili and a whole host of herbs. I have epazote here, which is the classic green mole flavoring in central Mexico, uh, some cilantro and one herb that may surprise you, and that's romaine lettuce leaves. It's very traditional. So now all I need to do is roughly chop the vegetables and the herbs, combine them in the blender with toasted pumpkin seeds and a little bit of the light chicken broth and make it all into a smooth puree. Fill my heavy pot with oil and set it over medium heat. Once it's hot, pour in your green mole base. Stir that mixture until it reduces and darkens a little bit in color. That should take about 10 minutes. When the chicken breasts have finished poaching, remove them from the pot. Then pour the broth through a strainer into another container. Now measure out a couple of cups of that broth and add some of it to the green mole. Stir it in and allow it to continue simmering over low heat. While that is simmering, I'm going to roast some vegetables, classic vegetables that go into green mole. Now, a lot of times in Mexico, they would just go into the pot and simmer with everything, but I love the flavor of these ones roasted. One is chayote, which is in the squash family. It's got a really light flavor, but if you roast it, it gets sweet. The other is the Mexican type of zucchini, I think you would call it. And don't worry if it's a little blemished on the outside because the skin of the calabacitas, the Mexican zucchinis is very, very tender. It's easy to bruise, but it's not going to affect anything about the way that this comes out. So now all I have to do is to chop them up. I'm going to do about three quarter inch pieces, um, toss them with a little bit of olive oil and salt, and then roast them at 400 degrees until they get a nice dark exterior. I like well roasted vegetables. When the chayote and Mexican zucchini have finished roasting, add some salt to your green mole and nestle the chicken breasts into the pot to reheat them. After about 10 minutes or so, you're ready to serve. Garnish your chicken with the roasted vegetables, some toasted pumpkin seeds, and a little fresh cilantro, an episote if you have it. And that's my best ever green mole.
Okay, so I fired up your appetite. Some of my favorite dishes, entertaining tips, and Mexican travel inspirations. Well, now I want to hear what you have to say. Visit us at rickbayless.com slash TV for recipes and a whole lot more.